Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. And before we get into it with our guest here today, I'd like to remind everyone that if you enjoy this content, to please give a like and subscribe down below. I greatly appreciate it. We have Ash on all the way from Baltimore to talk to us about our health and fitness journey. And I mean, we haven't had that many people from Maryland on. I actually know we've had, we've had a handful that I think of. So it's nice to add that variety. I am trying to get a guest on from every state of the country. And, you know, I haven't gotten Alaska and Idaho. Those are my only two. So I'm still desperately searching. But... She's on here to share her health and fitness journey, and yeah, just talk all things health and fitness. Most importantly, she's our current guest. Ash, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for, like, seriously, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm actually from Frederick, Maryland, but Baltimore sounds better than Frederick. So you say Baltimore. I did actually live in Baltimore for five years. Um, so I guess where it all started, I really, I, would, I didn't do sports in school. I, I swam. And when I say I swam, I wasn't like good at swimming. I got like the most improved award <laughs> for in like ninth grade. Um, but when I was leaving college, I had an ex who was super into bodybuilding. He's actually from Australia. And he kind of got me into like bodybuilding.com and, you know, like Dana Lynn Bailey. And that was back in like 2012, 2013. And I actually went and found a trainer and she's now a pro, but she doesn't really compete anymore at Exile. I don't know if you've ever heard of Exile. Um, and it was like, at the time it was like a, something out of pumping iron. Like I remember walking in there, I really had no lifting experience, like real lifting experience. And I was like, I love it. <laughs> like I can curse on here, right? Do it, but I, I'm going to bleep it out anyway, so yeah, you can just let them fly. But uh, okay. but obviously, okay. don't be that guest that like swears like five times every minute, though, because then it's like just a pain in the butt for me. But like, yeah, let them fly. Yeah. Okay, I'll try to rein that in then, because I'm a sailor. Um, and so I was like, I love it. I just love this. Like, it was gross. It was dirty. It was like everywhere. I loved it. <laughs> See, I'm already doing it. It sucks. Um, but, and I did my, actually, my first show was Figure. I did the Sean Ray Classic in 2013. And then my life crashed and burned, and I won't go into like a whole story about that. And then took a eight year hiatus, but I was still into fitness. I still trained on and off. Um, and then last year, I got like a bug to just do it again. And I did bikini, and I did okay in bikini. And then this year, I was, I, well, I had, after bikini, I instantly was like, I'm doing figure again. Like I'm, I'm not bikini, I'm figure. And so I trained all year and did my prep, did figure. And I just did um, the Northern USA's in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and then um, a show in Woodbridge. And I won figure overall in both of them. So I just, I'm probably sticking with figure for a minute. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, one thing that I find one of the things that really, you know, the people that do this sport really have in their background a lot of times that they have that sport that really sort of helps their body along. Obviously, like you said, you weren't like the you weren't like Michael Phelps in the swimming pool. But do you think that that swimming background did help you when it came to, you know, bodybuilding? Because like swimmers, they have the back. Like, like let's be honest. Did So did that? Did you think that any of your time that you spent in swimming really helped you out sort of like develop sort of a baseline? My upper body just like. If you if you let it fly, it'll grow. Um, I have like my arms and delts naturally put on. My back does as well. I could use more size and density to my back, but my arms and shoulders just grow, and I'm excited about it. <laughs> my legs could use a little more, uh, you know, pushing. Welcome to the club. I'm 6'3", so, you know, anything legs is just absolutely a disaster. I always make the joke I could inject pure muscle into my legs and they won't even gain an ounce. It's just a never-ending quest that will really never, never take off. But when you were getting started in bodybuilding, I mean, there's so many myths and misconceptions about the sport. And it really detracts, I think, a lot of people away from it because they just believe a lot of them. But was there anything that you were concerned about before you got into the sport? Or were you just one of those people who you just wanted to jump right in? I think... It's so much different now than when I was younger. Like when I was younger, I think I care. The reason I think I um, got away from it is I was a little bit more fearful of what people thought. And I believed outside opinions like, oh, it was really bad for my body. I was having like a lot of injuries. And I believed that bodybuilding was making it worse when really it wasn't. If anything, it was making it better, um, you know, within 
treating myself. And then I had it not to get too into it, but I had a pretty poisonous relationship that I got into after that show. And he basically convinced me like, you know, that I was ugly, what I was doing was ugly. And I believed it, you know, you just internalized it and believed it. And I was afraid of becoming, I guess, too like masculine looking or like, but it's, but I was also 22. Um, now that I'm 30, I'm like, I, I could care less what um, any, anyone thinks really. Like I don't do it for male validation or attention. I do it for me and what I want to do. So God, I like love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you brought up like a myth that I love to bust on this podcast is that, I mean, it's gotten better the last five years, but there are still so many women that have that fear that they walk into the gym and, you know, they pick up one dumbbell, they're going to put on 50 pounds of muscle overnight. How do you like to respond to that now? Cause I bet even to this day, you still hear that all the time. I don't actually hear it as much as I used to. Like I did have a girl come up to me and she's like, Oh, you're my inspiration. You, um, I, I don't want to get bulky. I see some of the girls in here and they're big and bulky. And I was like, that's crazy because I want to be big and bulky. <laughs> I was like, I want to be a big bulky. <laughs> like, but, um, that misconception is so far from the truth because it's so hard to put on. <laughs> I mean, it depends on your genetics. Of course, like, like I said, genetically upper body, like I do put on pretty quickly, but not everybody does. Um, you need to eat. Like I wouldn't have put on the muscle I did this year. It was literally, it's almost too consistent because I've been training on and off for eight years. Right. And I never was able to put on the mass that I wanted to because I wasn't consistent. This took two consistent years of eating five meals a day, hitting my macros, lifting, do basically doing all the things that my coach told me to, um, it doesn't just happen. Like it's definitely a very intentional, purposeful sport. Well, and I mean, there's so much more about this sport mentally than there is physically. And I mean, people are going to notice the physical changes because you know, they're, they're just going to see them, but you, you change so much more mentally, I think in this sport, because it just takes so much more mental strength. What has this journey been like for you mentally on, you know, the mental side of things? Because you know, again, most people will just notice that physical change that you make. Oh my gosh. It's been I have changed so much, especially in the past two years. You know, that discipline has always been in me, but it's definitely, again, just like building muscle and lean, becoming lean takes consistent work, working on your mindset and just even that belief mindset takes consistent practice and work. Like, I've, in addition to what I've been doing, I do like affirmations every day. Um, I have... Even now, even now that I'm a few years into it, I still have to have daily conversations with myself. Like I need, I'm not motivated all the time. Like, hey, I really shouldn't go past my macros for this, or I should really try and not have make a free meal turn into a free day. <laughs> so it's consistent work and accepting that you're going to still always have to do work. It's like a marriage, yeah. Like marriage, like I'm married to it. So. It's, yep consistently uh working with it absolutely i mean you took an eight-year break in between you know competing and this is a sport that really every single year it, it almost becomes a completely different sport which is how much it's able to evolve and change what were some of the bigger differences that you noticed from the eight years when you competed when you were 22 to competing now what were some of the biggest changes you noticed in the sport like oh you you mean like how the sport has evolved yeah okay so number one everybody's bigger. <laughs> Every division has gotten bigger. <laughs> um, like when I did figure and don't get me wrong, I was still really tiny when I did figure the first time, but I mean, I would say, um, I wasn't so far away from like what the pro figure girls look like now. It's, it's just a different world. Um, and that's why, even though I've qualified for nationals in 2022, I'm actually not going to do nationals this year. I'm going to take a full year and then try to re-qualify and do nationals in 2023 because to put the size on that I need, you know, that takes time. Um, and I would say also, I will say, I do feel like it's a more, because of social media, a lot of people complain that social media has like watered 
down bodybuilding, but I, I think it's actually brought a lot more awareness to it. And there's a lot more acceptance. Don't get me wrong. I still see people trash talking female bodybuilders. Um, I actually got my first, <laughs> my first little uh, trend life uh, comment today. <laughs> I was like, yes, <laughs> somebody's accusing me of something. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel, like, but I don't feel like it's as bad as it was, because I do remember being in like watching people on Dana, like Dana Lynn Bailey's page, and them like horrible, like horrible comments. And I feel like it's not as bad now. Um, it's still there, but people are at least hiding it more. They're like more ashamed to say it. Mm-hmm. Well, and yeah, and you brought it up and I was going to ask you too. I mean, like you're not an average looking 30 year old woman. I mean, how do you deal with that sort of that reaction that you get? Because I compare to sort of being like a mini celebrity where like if you were to go out, especially like if you were, you know, dressed the way you are right now. I mean, well, obviously don't do that in the middle of the winter in Baltimore because you're be a crazy. I mean, in the middle of Maryland, could you be considered a crazy person? But I mean, you are going to deal with, you know, some reactions to that. And for some people, it's just hard for them to adjust that. What has been your experience like sort of getting used to the fact that you are going to draw a lot more people's attention? Um, I, I, that's such a, I don't know. I do notice it, but I think I'll be honest since I've the more in shape or I guess, obviously aesthetically in shape I become, um, the more of a, a wide berth I get <laughs> in the gym. Um, people tend to, uh, I actually have a pretty nice gym community and I, I'm very blessed. I go to like a one life here in Frederick and I have a really big community there and everybody's really friendly overall, especially since COVID. I think we're all just grateful to be there. But as far as like looks and stuff, I mean, I notice people look, but I wouldn't say anybody has been outright um, rude to me or really said anything offensive to me. The, I mean, the worst stuff I get is like from my mom. <laughs> like, I'm, it's like, don't become too much. It's like, but I want to be too much. <laughs> Again, you're like a mind reader because you know like what I'm going to ask at time. And so, I mean, what were your friends and family's reaction like when you told them like, hey, I want to be a bodybuilder? I think everybody, right now, all my like close girlfriends who aren't like real uh, big into lifting, they are super supportive because, you know, they know this is a dream of mine. I think where everyone had to learn, to, they've more had to learn to adapt with my new lifestyle because within that eight year hiatus I took between my last show, I'll be honest, I was, I was basically an alcoholic. Um, so they were used to me like, you know, my diet, drinking excessively. That actually, before I um, really decided to compete again, I was just really having a lot of issues with alcohol and so I actually now have like a two drink rule or I don't drink at all it, it's not just because of bodybuilding um and I think that took them a minute to get used to is when I say I'm not drinking I'm, or partying I mean it or I wasn't as available as a friend and it's nothing personal but it's like you know I, I have a drink this dream and this passion that is like a fire inside of me and all of me goes into it and they had my friends and my family had to learn to like accept, you know, my choices, including my partner. Uh, my partner has been with me as a, as a normie, <laughs> as a muggle is what I call him. Um, and then seeing me transition, I get, same thing. It's just the people who want to be in my life are still in my life and they're learning to adapt. And don't get me wrong. I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm arrogant or egotistical and it's all about me, but I'm going to do me and I'm going to do what I have to, to reach this dream. And either people are going to still be there or they're not. Um, and I totally respect people's choices to not be there, but I'm going to do what I got to do. A lot of my guests that I have on have significant others that also compete or at least, you know, into the lifestyle. What's it like having someone who isn't because that seems to be sort of a rarity in this community that I, at least that I've interviewed. I think it was, a ch I mean, it was, I just almost want to grab it and see what he thinks. <laughs> but I, I think it was a challenge at first, especially with the food thing. Because, you know, like, he... Oh, he I, would, I would be eating pizza in front of you almost every night and just being like, doesn't this look good? He don't give, he don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> like, he brings home, Roy, like, Roy Rogers, he eats that in front of me. He just brought home, like, I, I mean, I might be able to have three meals right now, but not today. And he, like, brought home, like, a whole pizza. 
<laughs> and all through prep, all through prep, he like, he don't care. And, but that, I mean, in a way it's good for me because it's good for my discipline for me to like, I don't expect people just like I, people shouldn't expect me to change for what I'm doing for them. I don't expect people to change what they're doing for me. It is, it was a challenge at first, but it's kind it's weird. It actually kind of works because then he gets to do his thing. I get to do mine. And then we, we keep each other company. Um, he's actually been pretty, he's been very supportive. He was my, my photographer at both my shows. He was a good sport. <laughs> hey, well, that's, I've always said the significant others are the unsung heroes of this podcast because of the stuff that they deal with and they put up with. So again, you know, a, a shout out to them, but I mean, you brought up nutrition, and that is one thing that most people do not talk about as much as they should because it is so much more important than the working out and a lot of other things in this lifestyle. What were some of the bigger nutritional changes that you made when you took your second stint into this sport when you came back eight years later? Oh, God, it was a whole uphaul. So I, I got a coach, and she's amazing. I Now I'm, in March, it'll be two years with the same coach. I'm um, with Natalie Kaczynski from Team Loud. and. I don't think I remember hiring her and telling her like, Oh, I don't want to start till this date because basically I still wanted to be on my bullshit. <laughs> and she, um, I saw the meal plan and how strict it was. And I just was not prepared. Um, and, and don't get me wrong. Like, you know, her and I have had a little bit of like back and forth on it. It took me a minute to really realize that I, I had to be all in. Like, it's not like um, a regular fitness person where you have, you know, there's that balance. And right now I'm a little more balanced because it's off season. But at first it was just that all in mindset. And I would say I've definitely just been more, had to be more serious through both um, preps. Like last prep, you know, not that I wasn't following the plan, but I think I, you know, kind of looked for more loopholes in it. Well, this prep, I just was like, like laser focused, like nothing, didn't want to leave anything to chance. And did you change up your, you know, your workouts at all? Because unfortunately, a lot of people fall into that sort of cycle of just doing the same workouts over and over again, and then just expecting different results. And obviously, when you're in this sport, you know, you're gonna have to mix things up. But this last year, did you have to change things up at all from your year before when you were basically just sort of getting back in the swing of things? I would say, I mean, the workouts definitely changed once I was like, hey, I don't want to do bikini, I want to do figure, because I really... I obviously needed to put on size and my legs needed to be hammered out. So I would say things have changed as far as the frequency of what body parts I hit. And, you know, there she's changed up some of the workouts, but the, the fundamentals have pretty much stayed the same. And the goal is just to keep progressively improving upon the fundamental workouts. So that's really what I'm trying to do in the gym. So like, especially in the beginning of prep and this year, we've done like, we were doing like three, almost four leg days a week to try and hammer my legs out. So they'd come out on stage more. And now we're trying to do the same thing in my upper body. So not that I, my upper body develops pretty well, but I just, I need to be bigger. Is it being the gym bro in me? Is it hard to like not do like upper body as much as you would like to, especially when you're getting into like figure, because obviously they're not looking for you to just have like huge arms and like a huge back for figure. I love doing back. Like I love, actually I love doing, I love upper body. So I, I need lower body more, <laughs> but when she told me we're doing more upper body right now, I'm actually only doing one leg day a week right now. And we'll see how long we'll see. I know it's so nice. We'll see how long that lasts though, because my legs really need to be uh, worked on, but I really, I am a little sad. I don't do more chest. Like I do chest and back work right now, but it's not as much chest as I would like. Yep. Yeah, I know. And that's, I know that's the struggle that comes with these, some of these classes where it's just like some people, they just want to, you know, just be, you know, able to train the way that they want, but nope, you got to sort of conform to what the, the classes are. But the most important thing in this lifestyle that is rarely talked about, and it really needs to be because it's the hardest thing for most of these competitors that come on is the posing. I mean, it's harder than your nutrition. It's harder than the working out. I compare it now to being a perfect driver where you can be a great driver. You can never be a perfect driver. You can be a great poser. You can never be a perfect poser. It's always ever evolving. What has your journey with posing been like? Oh my God. 
the bikini posing. Let me tell you, bikini pose. My okay, my first show. If you find pictures of my first show, I had no idea what I was doing, and you can tell on on in the pictures. <laughs> then when I did bikini last year, Natalie worked so hard with me to get my bikini posing. <laughs> bikini. Okay, I would say figure posing is harder physically. Like it's you know, you have to be really using your muscles. And so you have to practice holding it so you don't cramp up on stage. Bikini posing is harder as in you've got to stay coordinated, <laughs> which I will be honest, I Ash is not the most coordinated person naturally. So I would say my posing improved um, in figure. But even when I'm watching myself in some of the videos, you know, there's definitely things where I'm like, ah, I could have done that better. Oh, I could have done that better. I just... You know, you're right. It's just, I just can't wait to keep polishing and bringing it up. Well, and I mean, you mentioned before, you know, with the figure posing, it's a lot more. Lat spread is one thing that I think so many figure competitors that I've had on talk about how that's usually the hardest pose to develop. And I mean, you have an upper body that takes off, but was the lat spread something that took you a while to develop? Or were you one of those people who, you know, you just, it came a lot more natural to you? Lat spread's not too hard for me. Um, it was my first show, which was another reason I looked like, didn't look right on stage. Um, but actually I was, I learned it after the show in 2013. And now I actually feel like I'm, I don't know. I wouldn't know how to teach somebody to do a lat spread. Do you know what I mean? It's such a like feel thing. Um, but I like, I like that pose. I mean, the only good thing about it is that like, it's like riding a bike is once you finally get it, you know, it's very hard to not not be able to learn it. But with this lifestyle, I mean, like you said, it requires so much of your time and so much of your energy. Are there any tips and tricks that you have for people out there on how to sort of be able to maintain, you know, a life outside of, you know, bodybuilding? Because it is, it demands a lot of your time and effort. Uh, gosh. Scheduling. Like keeping, I put everything on my calendar. Um, and that's not just for prep brain. That's just life having patience with yourself that just because you don't do the thing on your plan one day doesn't mean it can't be done next time and you can't get back on it. I think, and me included, I think a lot of people, they like miss something and then they like think the whole, sorry, (laughs) they think the whole, (laughs) I'm sure that's familiar to you. He's playing, he's playing Call of Duty, everyone, her boyfriend, her significant other in the background, everyone. So give him, cut him some slack. He probably just got killed or something. (laughs) (laughs) You could do a little better. <laughs> um, yeah, I no, no, no. You just go in there and you tell them. I remember my first game. So <laughs> <laughs> he, would, he wouldn't even think that's my answer. <laughs> I, I love telling him. Like I'm like, you should do better. Yeah. <laughs> like, or just be like, oh, oh, I expected more from you. Be like, like, wow, I'm embarrassed. Yeah, you're embarrassing in front of all of my <laughs> Call of Duty friends. Yeah, you got post on your Instagram and be like, yeah, he's so embarrassing right now, and this is gamer tag and everything like that. No, that would but no, that's I again Too yeah, far. be that that hearing those noises just brings me back to my childhood. That was like about half of my childhood when I wasn't doing sports, I was just yelling at random people online. So, you know, yeah, it, it We dated in high school and it used to be What is that game? Oh no, what is it? I can't think of it. World of Warcraft. Oh god. That was it. That was the game. Gosh, I and this is why. Honestly, okay, so you, not to go off track, but no problem. I, it, here's why it works, right? Because I think before bodybuilding, this would like hours on the video games thing would have been a problem. But now I'm not bothered about hours at the gym because he's doing hours of video games, so it works. <laughs> we both have our thing that we're doing hours of. No, that's, and again, that's one thing that I have found with the few of the guests that I have on that have, you know, significant others that aren't really into competing or just the working out lifestyles that, yeah, if they can find something else that sort of equates to the dedication that bodybuilding takes. Now, I'm not going to say that playing video games means you're as dedicated as a bodybuilder because that's just absolutely stupid because I've done it my entire life and that it's not real dedication, everyone. It's just sitting on a chair and pushing buttons and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to apologize for that quote ever. So if anyone comes at me in the comments down below. I don't care, but, um, yeah, it's just, it, th- I think that that would be one of the things that I would find important, but when you walk up on that stage, what is that feeling like for you knowing that, I mean, you've gone through a prep, which 
no one's ever really enjoyed their preps. I've had people on there that have claimed that they have, and I'm like, okay, you're a crazy person. I don't, you know, I I know you're lying. But what is that like when you finally get to walk up on that stage and show off all that hard work that you worked months upon months on? I think this year was the first year where it just, I was just so happy to be there. Um, I was excited to compete. I think my last two preps, I, I don't have an issue with prepping, but I kind of was ready for it to be over or I just wanted to like get through it while I feel like I went into these two shows excited to be on stage, excited to show the package that I had brought. Um, I had practiced the posing so much and pra- I mean, just all, all that went into it. It felt amazing to just be there and to present and to not only do that. And then like also, you know, and I would have been happy even if I didn't, you know, place as well as I wanted. Cause I would have just been happy that I felt I brought my best. Cause I knew I had brought the best package I had ever brought. But then also getting the overall wins too on top of that little, I mean, not just one, but two, just it felt out this year really felt amazing. I'm still on a high um, from it, even though it's been like almost a month since the shows. Oh, well, yeah. If you weren't motivated by that, I'd say, okay, then what's your problem then? Are you like one of those people that's just like, oh, you know, yeah, I did good enough, which is one thing that I, again, one of the reasons why I would have never competed in bodybuilding is that I would be one of those people where after I'd won my first show, I'd be like, okay, I'm done. You know, I, I did it. I won, you know, I'm done now. So like, I yeah, I go to the Olympia and I just win the first Olympia and I'd just be like, yeah, okay, whatever. Time to move on to something else or whatever like that. So, yeah, I just don't – that that's just me personally. I mean, if it wasn't – if it was like baseball or something like that, then, yeah, obviously I'd, I'd keep doing it. But I'm just one of those guys where it's like, yeah, climb the hill. Now what? But, but you know, so, again, that's the drive and dedication that really this sport entails that, unfortunately, I do not have for the bodybuilding aspect. But I just respect the hell out of the people that do because it is not an easy lifestyle. And on top of the not being an easy lifestyle, one of the biggest problems that I think a lot of people do not understand bodybuilders go through is post-show blues. And for anyone out there who might be your first time listening to this podcast, I mean, we talk about it quite often on this show. And, I mean, you're just not... You're just not going to be able to maintain that look 24-7. And some people try to do it. And, you know, it's it's unhealthy to really be at that stage weight. And I think a lot of people do not understand that. But what has that been like for you, you know, as your career has gone on, even though I know you took that hiatus, sort of just realizing that, like, hey, I'm not going to be able to maintain that stage look. Has it gotten easier for you to accept that as your career has gone on? This year, yeah. This has been the best. Um, I'm really – don't get me wrong. It's always going to be hard to watch your physique change. Like, I can see myself softening up. Um, and that's why reverse doing a reverse plan is so important. My first show, I didn't know what a reverse plan was. All my coach said to me, I had a different trainer at the time. All she said to me was let the carbs in slow. And then did I let the carbs in slow? No, I was going to the gas station and getting Twinkies. I got a family box of this quick and like went through the whole thing in a weekend. Um, I gained 30 pounds in about a week to two weeks. And I think that was a huge thing that contributed towards my alcoholism, my low self-esteem. Um, and it just was really hard to get back into it at that point. And then when I got to the eight years later point, I did reverse out of my bikini prep pretty well. But obviously that was a learning curve. I never like really reversed before. Um, I remember, I think I didn't do as well as I wanted in the bikini. And, but you know what? I wasn't, I don't think I was mature, still had some maturity to work on. Like I was a little like bitter about my placing as opposed to just being, you know, grateful to be there. And there was, I did, I, the place I got in a bikini is a place I should have gotten because, you know, um, I wasn't a hundred percent on point in my prep and, I didn't have the muscle development that I would have needed to to place higher. But then this year, I just, I don't know. I don't feel, I actually really don't feel like I have post-show blues right now. You know, I, there are things that are hard. Like it's, it's kind of like that. What now? Like, like, Oh, I mean, I know that I need to grow and obviously, you know, and I need to heal and recover. Cause I was very lean this year. Um, and not in a healthy lean spot. It's not healthy to be as lean as I was. So obviously my body's taking a minute to recover from that. And so that's kind of what I'm focusing right now. But I'm also like, I need a project before. (laughs) I feel like I need a project, but I'm trying to like 
breathe. So that's more what I'm going through. It's post-show um, anxiety <laughs> more than blues right now. I'm glad that you're not dealing with the post-show blues as much because, yeah, that is just – I've heard so many stories on this podcast of how it's affected people and it affects people in more ways than people could really imagine. And, you know, and, and that's great, but I mean, I hate cardio more than life itself. I, I just absolutely hate it. And when I say cardio, I mean like actual running. I mean, I could go on a walk for forever, but what is your relationship like with cardio, especially, you know, during your preps and now that you're in your off season, because I mean, that's another thing with bodybuilding too. It's like, yep, nope, not going to do that. I'm not going to do that much cardio, but how, are you a fan of it or is it something that you struggle with? What is your relationship like with it? Um, I won't say I've never complained about it, but I, I don't hate it. What was, I don't know. I like had a hate love with it. So we started off with like the steady state in this prep, you know, like the 40 minutes on whatever. And then what we did switch to, my coach likes to throw in these hit circuits, which I remember them from my last prep, but we only did them like near the end while we did these for like a month. So I will say at first I didn't hate them because it was kind of a nice switch up from steady state cardio. But as we got closer to the show, I was like, okay, these can end now. <laughs> so, cause I had to get up. Uh, mo most of them had to be done at the gym because it was on equipment that I don't have at home. And so I had to get up early, go to the gym, do these hit circuits. And it just, <laughs> I will say I got that's where I got really lean was with these hit circuits, so they worked. But um, I don't hate cardio; I just prefer not to do it. But it it does help get me up and moving in the morning, so you know. Yeah, I mean it, it does benefit the, you know the competitors in such a great way that yeah it is a sort of a necessary evil. But on top of that, I mean the hardest thing. I mean, about this entire lifestyle, and I don't care what anyone says, is sleep. And for anyone that disagrees with me on that, pull an all-nighter and then go to try to work out and tell me how that works out for you. But what is your relationship with sleep like? Because especially people just don't get that that stage lean that you get, you can get so tired that you're not able to sleep. And that sounds like an oxymoron to a lot of people, but it's like, no, it's it's true. Like, you can be so tired that, like, you can't sleep. And does your sleep get affected that much? And is it does it take a while after a show for you to really get back sort of into a somewhat natural sleep habit? I, the majority of my prep, I slept very well because my days were literally like packed. <laughs> so it would be like, get up, do the hit cardio, um, work eight hours, go to the gym, do more cardio, pose, go home, crash. Like it was kind of just this perpetual cycle. So I actually was sleeping pretty well and I take some supplements that help me sleep. Um, like Morphocom is something that really helps me sleep as well as uh, magnesium. Near the, I think when we were very close to the shows, I did have a little bit of a harder time sleeping. Like I remember before getting up in the morning for the show, that was hard for me. Um, and a couple of days after competing was hard. And I don't know if it had to do with being lean as much as maybe just like really excited. <laughs> just, I mean, how do you deal with that? The one thing that Bible is that really just is an eye opening thing for me that I just don't understand is how you're able to just mentally force yourself to do that lifestyle. Because for me, like there are times after work where I'm like, I'm never going to work. I mean, I, there's no way I can work out. But bodybuilders, I mean, after like an eight hour shift, they could just be absolutely exhausted. They just somehow find that switch in them to still go and do that. And I think that's what separates, you know, obviously the general public from bodybuilders that the general public, when it comes to working out, you know, if they're feeling sore, if they're feeling like they just don't want to do it, they'll say, Oh, okay, I'm not doing it. But bodybuilders just find that way. How do you think that you're able to sort of just turn that switch on where you're just like, Hey, no matter what I need to get this done. God, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say at a, there is a certain point where it does become, I'm sure you've heard that a lot. It just becomes a, ha like, there's really no argument about doing it because the discipline is just there. There, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some days where I have like had to like talk myself onto getting up off the couch to get to the gym. I still have those days. Um, but it also does, I think with bodybuilding versus the general public, it's how bad you want it. Like I, I want it. Um, and if you don't want it, that it's like personal training. Like I, I don't really personal train anymore. I, I have my certification, but I don't, but I, it's hard for me to relate to 
people who say they want something, but then they don't do everything they can to get there. So it's just wanting it. Yeah. No, and that's, yeah. And again, that's a drive that sort of makes bodybuilders, you know, a whole different breed when it comes to this. And I mean, we are getting close to the holidays now. I mean, we just had Thanksgiving and Christmas is coming up. How do you deal with that stuff, you know, with your dieting and stuff that goes along with it? Now, luckily, like you said, you're done with your season now. So maybe you can finally, you know, enjoy some, you know, Christmas food or, you know, some Thanksgiving stuff or leftovers. I don't know. But how do you normally deal with that? Because that would just be a pain for me just having to constantly answer everyone. Nope, can't eat that. Sorry. I'm just going to bring my salad in my water or my chicken in my water, basically. To Has that ever been a thing that you've really had to struggle with? In I think it was hard for me in my last prep. Like I would have kind of like a hard time um, not having anything when I would go out to eat or with eating, like going to my parents or having dinner. Um, so I would maybe try to like fit something in my macros, which in prep really you're not, you wouldn't do. Well, this year it's like, I mean, I was just all in this year. So, I mean, everybody knew. So if I went somewhere, you know, I brought my cool, if I was going out, I'd bring my cooler. When I'm in prep, like it's just, it's black and white. Um, I'm absolutely having my food. I'm happy to have my food. I'm not really wanting to eat anything. Right now, we're reversing. I am able to have a free meal once a week. I'll be honest, have my free meal been a little um, luxurious? Yes. <laughs> I'm working on it. Um, no, thanks. I balled out on Thanksgiving. I won't play. <laughs> had a good old time on Thanksgiving. Is, yeah. um, I just went out last night, went to Outback. Oof. So, with Serena. <laughs> yep, Serena Barish. Everyone's just talking about. We had her on the podcast before, and she'll come back on again. And yeah, that 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 is awesome. And I mean, what would you say is probably the one body part that you get most recognized for? Because like everybody has that one area, especially if they're in the you know working out that they get most recognition for. What would you say is yours? Right now, it's my delts. Yeah, I do get a lot of compliments on my delts. So, which is that's how that's how you can tell someone's a dedicated fan when they compliment you on your delts. Not no average Joe is gonna walk up to someone and be like, "Oh, nice delts, bro." Yeah, <laughs> that's all I want. <laughs> I was actually that was a real goal for me this year was to like grow my delts, and they they definitely grew. So, but of course, we can always do more. Always get more. That's the bodybuilding mindset too. I mean, yeah, you can always go to the gym, but then it's always you know I'm, I I can never be. Which I mean, if you're like an Andrea Shaw, I was like back to back Miss Olympia. It's like. I, I'm sorry. I can't, it, I can't, you just gotta be like, okay, I did it. Like, I don't need it. Cause then there was like, Oh, we got to get bigger and better. It's like, why you just, won. you just won. You can keep where it's so, all. But again, that's the, another reason why I'm not a bodybuilder and they are. But a question that I love to ask all the bodybuilders on the show is, you know, if someone were to walk up to you and say, you know, Ash, we made the decision. You can change one thing about the sport and everyone would go along with it. What would be one thing that you'd like to see changed? About the sport? Yeah. It does feel um, a tad sexist to me, <laughs> the sport, like as far as the prize money. Oh, yeah. Uh, that I'm not a huge fan of. And that is a huge reason, I'll be honest, I didn't want to do bikini again either. Don't get me wrong. Like now that I've done a bikini prep, bikini is hard to be. I have respect for bikini competitors, but there is just something about a sport where when your feedback is get a brighter suit or change your hair or change your makeup where none of the male divisions is that going to be Ronnie Coleman every day was being told that he needs to grow his hair out longer. Okay. (laughs) What is it? Ronnie Coleman was being told every day that he needs to get his hair lightened a little bit and stuff like that. And that, sorry, Ronnie, your thong is really a little, you know, it's a little too bright now. So no, but yeah, that is, and you're the first person that's ever brought it up, and I've been waiting for someone to say that. So that's why I interrupted you. But I'm going to let you continue now. But I'm just going to say, I have been waiting forever. You're going to be like my 500th guest when this comes out, and you're the first person that's brought that up. How? I, that's what I'm saying. Well, again, my, fir- my first 100 or so are musicians. So, you know, obviously, if a musician is going to be like, my one thing that I would change about music, bodybuilders, female bodybuilders should not be wearing that. No, so that's not going to. But, yeah, I'm still shocked that it took this long. Yeah, I, that's that's probably I love the sport, and I you know I I love all divisions, but it's just some just some stuff I'm like, especially when they took women's bodybuilding out. And don't get me wrong, like I'm not like up at that point, but when they took it out because they were saying it's not um, like it's not feminine enough. It's like why does that matter to me? It's like why does that matter? That's not what it's supposed to be about. It's supposed to me it's about physiques. And I feel like sometimes it's not. Um, 
I don't know. Oh, I I draw the line if they're females that, that walk out on the stage and they have a beard like me. Then that's where I draw the line. I'm like, okay, we got to, you know, let's go in the corner now. Let's have a little conversation. But, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, too, where it's like if you're really just judging on someone's physique, then that doesn't really matter what, you know, what sex you really are. I mean, it's – and I've never really thought about that. And, you know, as much as, the you know, the females, you know, talk about their bikinis, I will say, though, in, in defense of the – at least some of the men that do – the, what the men wear is not flattering as well. You can basically see everything, and I'm just gonna leave. I'm just gonna leave it at that. When they walk out on stage, both sides, you can really kind of they, they don't leave that much to the imagination. But yeah, I totally, yeah. And I've heard that for some guests on here, they're like, yeah, my feedback was I needed like a different bikini and stuff like that. And it's like, how how would you say that? That's like telling a baseball player, yeah, get a different bat. That's what I that's what I recommend for you. It's like, come on, yeah, like, really, yeah. Well, I, I don't mind. I mean, obviously, the minimal amount of clothing, I don't mind that. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, the whole point is to show your yeah. physique. It's more like just stuff that I know like wouldn't be a male's feedback as a female. Um, and I mean, the prize money too. To me, it's kind of unacceptable. But I mean, I would I would expect maybe if it was just a little bit less, but like it's like ten times less for like for like a lot of times. It's like how do you justify that? Yeah. Yeah, I know they're working on it. Like, I know Wings of Strength has, um, like, the shows that they do for female bodybuilders, and they're able to win some good prizes. So hopefully there's going to be more of that. You know, I do think there are people out there advocating for um, the female divisions more, and, you know, hope, and that's why where I do think social media is a good thing. Um, hopefully they listen. <laughs> I mean, I'm just a little lashed right now, but that's just the my opinion. No problem. No, no worries at all. And I mean, when we do talk to you a year from now, because I mean, you were such a great guest to have on. I'm more than happy to have you on next year. Where would you like to be at in your bodybuilding journey? Where would you like to just be at just in your overall life? What are some goals that you'd like to have achieved when we have you on next year? Oh my gosh. I mean, right now, the, the number one goal is to improve my physique the way that I need to. I mean, I'm shooting for my pro card and I think that's where everybody's shooting for if you're an NPC. So that is I'm hoping that next time, you know, if we do this again, I will, you know, at least be on my way. Um, and that's where I would really like to be. I want to, and I just want to, I want to be, hopefully I just look a little bigger. <laughs> I just want to be, want to be built like a fridge. I saw that on some meme where it's like, I just want to be built like a fridge and that's it. Does it? I'd rather just be like, I just want to be the guy that carries fridges. Then basically, then that's that. that that's my thing. But yeah, that's and that's that's. So are are you just mentally preparing yourself for how much more food you're gonna have to eat now in this off season? God, I hope so. <laughs> I mean, my food is going back up pretty yeah. quickly. Um, I don't know. It does actually get to a point that, like, right now, I could eat. I, I am starting to not be as hungry as I was, um, but. I have been in places with my food where I'm like, this is a lot of food. <laughs> you actually, some, you know, most people complain about having to cut your food, but it does go the other way too sometimes where you're like, I just don't feel like eating. I just want to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, that is just, and people don't understand that that's also a problem to it because there's so many things about the sport that people just do not understand. Cause I tell a lot of my guests before I have them on, you know, like one of the things that I hear of all the time from people, where I'm like, Oh yeah, I have a lot of bodybuilders on my podcast. They're just like, Oh, those people just work out a lot and they go on stage and they pose. And it's like, you got two of the few points that go on. I mean, you got about 1% of the lifestyle down. There's just so much more to it. But what advice also would you like to give someone who's, you know, maybe not just even wanting to become a Bible or just wanting to get in shape because so many people just, find ways mentally to sort of, you know, psych themselves out of the gym. And I mean, it's, it, for me, it's always just take that first step in the gym. And it's very hard to not, you know, walk out without getting a workout in. But if someone were to walk up to you and say, you know, like, Hey, I'm thinking about, you know, changing things up and, you know, getting in shape. What, what's the best piece of advice that you would give someone? You know, nobody will stick with it. If you don't believe that you can, um, that's probably honestly believing that you can reach your goals and then putting into action what you need to reach your goals is imperative. So really number one, you believe that you can do it and every day tell yourself that you can do it like every day. Cause I think that's what happens a lot is you go into it really motivated. You're like, yeah, I got this. I'm going to do it. And then you, you mess up or you have a hiccup or something. There's a barrier. And then you get off of it. 
um, completely instead of it's okay to fall off and then crawl right back on, you know, um, just believing is the number one. Like, I can't tell you how much of what I've accomplished in these past two years is from telling myself that I can. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, my personal advice is going to be have a home gym because that makes things so much easier. You don't even have to go outside. You don't even have to walk. You know, that's that's just, you know, you, that's just so good. I have a little setup, you know, at my I'm at my parents' house. And, you know, they they still have a little setup downstairs that they never use. So I got to use it every once in a while. But, yeah, it's it's perfect, especially if we, you know. COVID or whatever happens again, you know, it, it's a perfect setup there, but also, I mean, yeah, COVID was just such a huge thing. How did you deal with that mentally? Like with the gym shutting down and everything, because that was the, my biggest concern when all that happened was like, how are my bodybuilders that I have on dealing with this? Because like, I'm like, Oh my God, this is going to be, an, they're the one demographic where they're going to be affected by this a little bit more than some of the other people that I know. You know, bodybuilders are, I know a lot of bodybuilders that were pretty impacted um luckily i think for me i was bikini so i didn't need to go as heavy at the time so it didn't like devastate me as much and i was also new to competing again because it had been eight years because it was you know right when i got my coach was when everything shut down um and we just went straight into home workouts and i because i was a personal trainer and i would do some like at home training i had like equipment to use at home so I just basically adapted. And I think bodybuilders in general adapt to anything. We make it work because we want it to work. So I, I pretty much, as soon as the closest gym to me, so the first gym to open up was West Virginia. So as soon as West Virginia opened up, I like joined a Gold's there and like drove like 30 to 40 minutes <laughs> to go to the gym every day. Hey, yeah, more more power to you on that. And well, the last few questions here. I mean, if there's one thing that you could, you know, let the general public know about female bodybuilding that they wouldn't know, or one thing that you would like maybe dispel that might be something that people believe, what would it be? Because like, like I said before, bodybuilding in and of itself is a sport that, you know, m most people have little knowledge of and a lot of misconceptions, but female bodybuilding, you times that by about 10. I think, oh gosh, that's a hard one. <laughs> um, I guess that we all started somewhere i think people do get a little intimidated um and I, I mean me included you know and i'm still intimidated like i'm a, I'm a little fish in a very big <laughs> big pond there's some amazing physiques out there but everyone starts somewhere um and we still have that beginner inside of us you know i, I would like to think and I think that we're nicer than we look. Oh, 100%. That's why I still talk to them, everyone. It's like, that's the biggest myth for me is that like, there's always that, you know, that stereotype of, you know, just the, just the roided out, just angry person that, you know, never going to like, just don't even look at me basically. But they're, yeah, they're some of the nicest people you ever meet. And that's because a lot of them have gone through issues that led them into the sport of bodybuilding that then they realize that, you know, like, Hey, you be nice to people and treat them with respect. Or yeah, I've said that they are some of the nicest people that you'll ever meet or competitors. Obviously, if you're in the gym with them, don't go up to them when they're in like mid set and then ask them a question because, you know, that's just that. That's just common etiquette, but yeah, they're more than likely just going to be super nice to you and really help you with stuff. That's what I found at least. No. And that's, that's honestly been my experience as well. I have been a majority of the people who I've talked to in the sport have been so wonderful and supportive. I've made some amazing connections. You know, I thought there was a time where I thought I had to move to like have a bodybuilding community because I'm in Mar like I'm in Maryland. Like I didn't think there was like a big, lifting community here well, i was gonna say you have katie lee there but you know so that's a, that's another big one but i mean yeah the, there are some that i remember from baltimore so yeah there i mean there's more than there's in minnesota minnesota we have like like one or two pros for the guys and i don't even know if we have any for the women i mean it's it's barren up here at least so at least you have something there, there that's what i and i i have it's like i've found, and it's not just bodybuilders it's like i've found this through competing, I have like found this fitness community because everybody loves talking about it. People love learning about it. And I love talking about it. I think it's so interesting. I think it's so cool that you do this. I think it's so cool that you have such an interest in the sport. Um, well, it, for me, a part of the interest too, is I was just like, okay, I need to get in that mindset because I was like, these people are psychopaths sometimes. Like when I've seen guys at the gym where literally, yeah, they're just showing up and they're like dead asleep almost because they're just so tired and they're still getting in. I was like, 
I need a way to harness that myself so that I can maybe apply that to other areas of my life. But And also just that drive and that dedication, like I told you before, I mean, that is just the most impressive thing for me. And the fact that, you know, what really impressed me with the females is that like, yeah, you do, you guys do get screwed over with pay. You guys do get screwed over with, you know, some, some image issues that happen with, you know, just especially a lot of ignorant men that, you know, make some comments. But it, and it's also too, is this, this like, this is so much more of a lifestyle that, you know, is about a lot of it's about helping people. Now, obviously some people take it to the extremes and they do, you know what they do and you know, it, it causes, you know, some things to happen, but yeah. And well, I, I was going to ask you about this cause I totally forgot to ask you about this in the beginning, but I was going to ask, you know, this has been a year in bodybuilding that has really exposed a lot of things, you know, the extremes that people go to. Obviously I was aware of all that stuff, you know, before that, because just from talking to people and knowing the stuff, but it seems like the general public has sort of with all the deaths that have gone on, the general public has sort of gotten a glimpse of, you know, the extremes that these competitors go to and just, you know, the mindset that it has. And I think the only good that can really become out of this is that, you know, maybe they start to realize that, you know, like, Hey, we need to tone down some things. Really. I hate using the word tone too, even on this podcast too. Cause first of all, that should never even be a word. I hate, I hate the word tone more than life. stuff, but I had to use it in that context. But what is your, you know, viewpoint on all that that's been going on? Because it seems like this might be like a watershed year in just bodybuilding in general, when it comes to people sort of waking up and realizing like, Hey, is it really worth all the stuff that you do to yourself just for a trophy when it comes to your health very long term? I, I honestly, you know, it's my health. And I think that's a huge reason it took me eight years to come back to it is I really need to get back on my health. Um, I had a lot of pain, like chronic pain issues going on and, you know, I wasn't ready to go back into like, you know, basically beating my body up, um, for a sport. And I feel so blessed after all that stuff came out, I feel so blessed to have my coach because Natalie really makes sure that we put health first. Like, you know, the first supplements I'm taking are health and wellness supplements um you know some of the diet changes that she does are to target health you know and she she has me do blood work um she check she has me fill out data on my charts like about how i'm feeling so and if i tell her hey something's not sitting right with me she listens and she takes feedback and we can have if i ask, and i'm allowed to ask questions like hey why are we doing this <laughs> can I have a reason? You know? Yeah, she's not one of those shut up and lift coaches, really, basically, yeah. where it's just like, yeah, yeah. Like, if I tell her, like, hey, I have a neck injury, <laughs> she is like, okay, let's, she goes, okay, let's do this. Um, you know, she's not like, oh, well, too bad, just keep going, you know. Who is your coach? I always want to give a shout out to the good coaches out there. So, Natalie Kaczynski, her um, Instagram is at EC Stormtrooper. And she's with Team Loud. So I'll leave a link to her down below because, yeah, I there needs to. Because unfortunately, when people get in this, starting this lifestyle, they don't realize that for every good coach, there's like four or five bad coaches out there. So it's very rare, at least in this, at least in my experience. So it's, I always love to give the shout outs to those. But lastly, is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to before we wrap things up? Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, Lord. That's probably like a, a list. Um, <laughs> I mean, other than, I mean, other than her, yeah. um, yeah, like, I mean, your significant other. Oh, sorry. I was oh her. yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I was going to be like, Oh, my cat, <laughs> her cats too. We had a cat. We had a cat thing happened before the podcast. Everyone. I, yeah. I know. And now they're not even showing up. Wait, how many cats do you have? I have two. Okay. So we just set up our Christmas decorations today. So they're probably in there. Like, are they, are they in the tree? Basically. <laughs> Yeah, they're in the tree and knocking the nativity set over. Yeah. So, <laughs> baby Jesus, yeah. baby Jesus is falling down. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. Um, no, yeah, I mean, my, don't yeah. worry, my partner's been great. Like, Mark has been fantastic. <laughs> so, he's a good kid. Well, we can see he doesn't have a gun point in your head, so now you can say that he hasn't been fantastic and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> blink twice, <laughs> blink twice if you're telling us the truth. <laughs> Actually, I think he left. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where he went. No, yeah, but no, that's, but, uh, yeah. I've, and I've had many, many friends and yeah. family and just so much support. I am a very blessed. I like... I have spirit guides that I'm very blessed with, not to be creepy, but um, 
you know, I do a lot of spiritual channeling and, um, okay. Now I have to ask you a couple of questions about that before we wrap things up, because that is, I, that no, no, it's something that I've been fascinated by. And like you said, like in her Instagram profile, she says that she's a little bit of a weirdo. And I was like, okay, I need to have a guest like that on then because, so what do you mean by like channeling your spirit? Because it's been something, I mean, obviously I'm, I haven't done it myself, but like, I'm fascinated by that type of stuff. So channeling, I've taken a couple of channeling courses. Channeling is basically like you communicate with the spirit realm. Um, so I've done like animal communication. Um, typically the spirit, the spirits that come through when I channel other people are typically spirit guides and spirit guides are typically people that have passed over. Um, but they don't necessarily mean they're going to be in this life. They're, could be in past lives. So mo all the spirit guides who have basically supported me in bodybuilding are all spirit guides from my past lives. Um, you know, and I have like a couple main ones who really help support that. So like I have like a, I'm trying, like he's like a, a Mongolian soldier. Um, and he's like always with me in the gym, like pushing me and, <laughs> and then I'm only making those faces career. because this is so foreign to me that I'm just like, that's interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty wild. <laughs> it's like I can feel them now because they're like super excited. I'm talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, though no, I, I yeah, that is just that's just amazing. I'm not gonna ask too many more questions of that because I feel like I've opened. I feel like I've opened Pandora's box, and I was like, okay, we gotta close this. Oh, thing I before, know that's it's before probably his own box. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> no, no, it's fine. No, I no. And, teach their own i mean everyone believe what you want to believe and stuff like that where it's like if i had a mongolian soldier around me all the time i'd be pretty freaked out myself but i'd just be like hey you know but that's that's awesome and again you know ash thank you so much for coming on you know i really appreciate it and you just a delight to talk to and yeah I, again thank you you too i'm so excited i love your little monkeys from the back are they monkeys yes so here's what they are so they're all the major league baseball stadiums that i visited they have those rally monkeys that you have you can see i got the baltimore Oriole one in the center there I got a Boston Red Sox one, a New York Mets one, a Colorado Rockies one, a Yankees one, a Phillies one, a Pirates one, a Nationals one, a Twins ones. That's and wild. I've been to a lot more than that, but that was when I was about eight, eight, nine years old, ten years old going through that, and I still kept them there because I thought one day they might be valuable and still not valuable. But hey, maybe a hundred years from now my grandkids they'll they'll be able to They're sell them. Awesome. Yeah. Again, and I really yeah, again, I really appreciate having you on and sharing your story. And I think it's I think this will do great for a lot of people. And again, yeah, thank you so much. And you know, everyone go and leave a link or a go leave a like down there by your Instagram page. Go and give her a follow. I'll leave a link. You will get inspired, you know, get off that couch and stop eating all those Twinkies and get in shape. But again, thank you so much. I appreciate it greatly. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my goodness. You have a wonderful holiday. Thank you so much. You as well. And again, everyone have a wonderful holiday as yourself and you know. This is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing off. Have a great day, everyone.